Hi friends! We're excited to be together. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to hear from God's Word? Join us. It's going to be a great morning. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Star. I want to invite you to stand. We're going to begin our worship service right now.
sin, nobody but Jesus who pulled me out of that bed. He did, he did, who paid for all of our sin, nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave. in his presence.
Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him for the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glory, grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he has lavished on us. Thank you, Lord.
Welcome, everyone. We're very happy to have you join us on Happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, I just feel in my heart um, for us to take a moment to really just thank Jesus, thank our Lord Almighty for dying on that cross for you and me. Yes, Lord. Because of him, we have hope. We have forgiveness. We have happiness. And I know we come every Sunday and we praise the Lord and every morning and every night we may thank him. But I just want you to take a moment without music just to thank him and really give him that raw worship and praise for the beautiful thing that he did for us and that we can have be here today and have salvation. So just take a moment just to thank him. sit down. Make sure you give the, your neighbor a hug. Give him that hug, that warm, warm hug, full of Jesus, full of hope, and full of joy. Go ahead. Don't be shy. <laughs> and as you get seated, I want to draw your attention to the screen. Hi, everyone. We're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today at Morning Star Church. If you're new here, we'd like to say hello and to give you a few ways where you can connect. Text NEW to 813-567-8708 for our digital connection card. Stay in the loop by downloading the Morning Star Church app. There you will find lots of information that will help you stay connected. Now, we want to give you an opportunity to continue to worship through giving. We have several secure ways to give. First, you can give online at mstarchurch.org forward slash give. We also have a convenient text to give option. Just text the amount you would like to give to 84321 and follow the prompts. You can also give through the app or even put a check in the mail <coughs> to 5102 West Linebaugh Avenue, Tampa, Florida, 33624. And if you're here with us in person, you can always utilize the secure drop box in the back of the auditorium. The Bible reminds us in 2 Corinthians 8, 7, that just as you excel in everything, excel in the grace of giving also. Because giving flows from the heart of God toward us, we get to follow his lead by being generous givers too. Thank you for joining us here today. We're so glad you came. And we pray God's abundant blessing upon you. And we pray that you experience his presence here today at Morning Star Church. Well, good morning and happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday, I should say. So glad to see all of you. My name is Tony, and I get to serve as lead pastor here at Morning Star Church. Whether you are here in the house or if you're joining us online, we want to welcome all of you. If you are joining online, do me a favor, if you will, let us know where you are today and share this video to your social media. We sure would appreciate that. If you're here in the house and this is, if you're, like, if you're new or if you're fairly new to Morningstar, we hope this won't be the last time that we see you here at Morningstar, especially if you don't have a home church. Please come on back and be with us next Sunday. We got a spot for you. Amen? We got a spot for you in this family if you want it. We sure would love to have you. <clears throat> um, 
Every Easter, uh, every Resurrection Sunday, Heather, if you can help me with that. Uh, it's my lovely wife, Heather. Everybody say, hey, Heather. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to show you just more of my shallow, superficial side for a minute if I can. Is that all right? You got one too. Don't be uh, trying to play me like that. Anybody ever love these things? You like these things? These little Easter eggs. I like these. I'm going to tell you why I like them. Because you never know what's inside. But it's usually something cool, right? When you open these things up, it might be something fun. Like, I don't know, a little Lego guy. Spider-Man Lego man. Pretty cool, right? He's fun to play with, right? You might open up another one. Oh, this one's got a little smiley face on it. That's kind of cool. You might open up another one and you might find uh, like a matchbox car or, again, something else to, to play with. Uh, every now and then you open up one of these and um, it has like your favorite candy inside. Anybody like Reese's peanut butter eggs? Anybody like these things? Yeah, don't you wish you had one like me? Excuse me, this is going to be cruel and unusual punishment if I can get this thing open um, because I'm going to get a little sugar rush as I start. This one? No, all right, you know, I don't have enough for you to try it. But I love these things. I'll finish that later. Um, here's another kind that my kids always liked. Any of, any of you like the money eggs? How many of you like the money egg? My kids love, we didn't have too many of them because we were poor. But the money egg, man, you pull in like a wad of cash or something out of an, out of an egg. Because how many of you know five bucks can buy a lot of Skittles, right? So my kids were always happy to see the money eggs coming along. Again, these, these eggs like this are fun because you just never, ever know what's going to be on the inside when you open it. But here's what we also know, especially if you've been doing this for as long as I have. You open enough Easter eggs in your life, and every now and then, one's going to misfire. Every now and then, you're going to open it up, and you're going to figure out this was a dud. This was so disappointing because it's so empty. And you're like looking inside and trying to <coughs> shake it out, see, just to make sure. We don't like empty. Amen? You ever had an empty gas tank? Anybody? Nobody likes empty, right? How about this? You ever, you ever um, um, had uh, like an empty wallet or an empty bank account? Anybody besides me? Empty pockets, no money. Um, when I was 24 years old, but before Heather and I were married, I invited her father out to breakfast one morning at Cracker Barrel, right? And so um, I was going to ask his blessing on our marriage because I wanted to walk in my future father-in-law's favor. And so we, we went out. We were having a great time. Everything was going really, really well. In fact, I, was in, I, I felt like I was impressing him. I feel like I'm saying all the right things, doing all the right things until we got finished with the meal and it was time to pay for the meal and I discovered I ain't got no money. My pockets were empty. I did not bring my wallet. My wallet didn't have any money most of the time anyway, but I didn't have my wallet. And so I'm panicking, freaking out, thinking I'm, this is my future father-in-law I'm trying to impress. Right? Single guys, take notes. I'll, I'll teach you my ways. Like, this is how you really do it. This is how you impress. So it goes down like this. Dr. Khan, I, I really love your daughter, and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. And you can trust me. I am going to take care of her. But first, I'm going to need you to pay for these pancakes, all right? So if you can, <laughs> you can hook a brother up and pay for my grits. I appreciate it. But from there, emptiness gets more and more serious. If your tummy is empty and you run to the refrigerator and find out that it too is empty, that's no good. But again, it gets even worse from there. How many of you have ever made an empty-headed decision? Anybody else besides me? You just made a dumb choice. It was just not smart and then 
Maybe you have to live with the emptiness inside that you feel that results from that empty-headed decision. There's also emptiness in your heart sometimes, like when a loved one passes away. Or if you're married, you're in this marriage, and the marriage you know is empty, and you're going home to him, you're going home to her, but the apartment is going to feel empty because you're just basically roommates. Or maybe you used to be married, and now you're not married anymore because it all blew up in your face, and you know she left, she walked out the door, and she ain't coming back. Maybe you're here today, and you'd like to be married, but the the dating prospects ain't looking so good. It's kind of a barren wasteland out there in the dating scene, Pastor T. And it left you feeling empty. It is possible that some of us here this morning, right now, you're trying to recover from from some empty promises that somebody made to you at one point in your life and they did not deliver. Maybe, Maybe you had a dream, a vision for what your life would someday become and it never did become that. And you can't figure out why. And it's just kind of left you... A little bit empty inside. Let me tell you, if you feel empty in any way in your life, did you know that you have a lot in common with many of the key players in the original Easter story? Did you know that? Yeah, for sure. When they all woke up on the original Easter Sunday morning, just about every person we see in the biblical narrative was feeling empty on the inside, and can you blame them? No, of course not. Their entire world was shattered. Everything had crumbled to pieces. Their rabbi, their leader, their teacher, Jesus. He had been arrested on false charges, humiliated. As he stood trial, he was then tortured and savagely, brutally beaten within an inch of his life. They grabbed a crown of thorns, about that long, each of the thorns, and they jammed it into his skull. Then they nailed him to a cross. Jesus is is enduring indescribable suffering while there. And then he died. Luke 23, 46 says that after hanging on the cross for six agonizing hours. Can you imagine that? Six hours just on the cross Verse 46, Jesus called out with a loud voice and he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. It was over. And and many of his friends saw this. They're, They're sitting there watching this unfold. They see it happen with their own eyes. Verse 49 says, all of those who knew Jesus, including the women who had followed him, they stood at a distance watching. Then they took his broken, lifeless body down from the cross. They wrapped it in burial clothes, and they they then laid it in a borrowed tomb. Then what? Then they went home, brokenhearted, eaten up with fear and, and confusion and pain, and no doubt, no doubt, feeling empty on the inside. They had hitched their wagons to Jesus They they thought he was the one. They were sure. They'd never met anybody like him before. They knew he was the Messiah that Israel has been waiting on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. He's given us hope finally, but now all the hope's gone. Why? Because he's gone. That's Friday. And by Sunday morning, nothing had changed. Don't you know? By Sunday morning, the disciples and all the others, I'm... I'm sure they woke up feeling more lifeless, feeling more empty than ever before. Let's let's pick up the story in Luke 24. Verse 1, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices that they had prepared to, to, to wrap in his body, in his grave clothes to prepare the body. Then they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And you know that's great. They don't know that's great just yet. They're like, you got to be kidding me. Somebody must have stolen the body. What happened? Man, we, as if, as if this weekend could get any worse. Now they're thinking it has, verse 4. But suddenly, somebody say suddenly. 
Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them, and in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember, didn't he tell you? Didn't he try to explain this to you already? The Son of Man, he said this. These words, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners. Check. Be crucified. Check. And on the third day, what? Be raised again. And, and the Bible says they remembered his words. But do a quick study of all four Gospels, and you will very quickly see clearly they remembered his words, but they didn't believe his words. They didn't believe this. You know, some people... It, neither did the disciples when the women went back and told them. Some people say that the disciples just made up this whole thing. The whole thing about Jesus rising from the dead. It was a story that they concocted, right, to save their own hides or so that they could look good or maybe they were just delusional. But at first, you read it for yourself, they didn't even buy it themselves. And why would they? Let me ask you if this has been your experience. It's been mine. When people are dead, they typically stay dead. Have you seen that to be true in your own life? When you go to funerals, are, are, are quite a few of these people popping right back up out of, the, out of the casket and saying, hey, surprise, just kidding. No. People who are dead typically will stay dead. So I'm sure they're like, don't toy with us. This crazy idea of Jesus rising for the Don't play with our emotions. And you know this to be true if you've ever been there. I have. When you have a hole in your soul, man, when, when your heart feels hollowed out inside, you ain't got time for games. You're just trying to cope. You're just trying to get through, man. You're maybe trying to fill the emptiness in whatever way you can, whether it's healthy or not. Amen, somebody? Because <laughs> don't we do that too? When, when you're feeling empty inside, don't we make our own efforts at filling the void? How do we do that? Lots of ways. Maybe more screen time, right? Because, yeah, we need to binge one more Netflix show, right? More reels, more social media, more endless scrolling. Tony, at least it'll dull the pain. <laughs> at least it'll be a distraction. What else, though, do we try? How do we numb things, dull the heartache? Um, how do we fill these places inside? Just stay busy, right? Just put in more hours at work. Work some overtime. Just keep yourself moving, running. Do more. Accomplish more. Win more. A few years back, 60 Minutes did a, um, an interview with our boy Tom Brady. And by the way, Tom, I know you watch every Sunday. Just want to give you a shout out, man. Thanks for being so faithful. Next time you're here in Tampa, come see us. Pay your tithes while you're here. We appreciate it. <laughs> they did an interview with Tom Brady. And I remember when this interview came out, it actually blew my mind because he said something that really just kind of arrested my attention. How many Super Bowls did Tom Brady win over the course of his career? Anybody remember? Seven, right. Pretty decent career, would you say? He did okay. After Super Bowl trophy number three, Three out of seven. He's already won three. That's more than almost anybody else had ever won. They're interviewing him, and he said this. He said, why do I have three Super Bowl rings, and yet I still think that there's something greater out there? He said, I reached my goal. I finally, I finally fulfilled my dreams, but I'm still thinking there has to be more to life than this. What's the problem, Tom? I'm going to tell you, Super Bowl trophies don't fill the emptiness either. Awards, achievements, none of it. Okay. How about money? Give me that money egg. Where's that money egg? If I make enough money, then I can buy more stuff. I can buy a fancy house. I can buy a sleek automobile. I can buy all the cool toys. I'll fill my life with stuff, and that surely will fill up all of the holes inside. Right? Wrong. Let me go back few thousand years and ask King Solomon what he thinks. You ever heard of this guy? 
Man, among other things, one of the richest men in all of history. He would have been a billionaire in today's terms. And today, how wealthy was he? He was Jeff Bezos wealthy. This guy was Bill Gates wealthy. He had so much money, whatever he wanted, he could get. Ecclesiastes 2.10, he says this. He says, whatever my eyes desired. He's looking back on his life. He said, I did not keep from them. I kept from my heart no good pleasure. What does that mean? It, it means, look, if I thought I wanted it, I got it. Whatever I wanted, I went out and I got it. So how did that work out for you? Did that go well? Next verse. I considered all that my hands had done and the hard work I invested, but all was vanity and a striving after the wind. He says, it's like chasing a breeze. It's like if you were to go out here and chase a, a good stiff wind, you think you're ever going to catch it? Will you ever grasp anything in your hands? No. It, it left him empty. The truth is, we try to fill these empty places in our life in all kinds of ways. I don't like this husband. I'm going to trade him out and get a new model. I don't like this job. I'm going to leave that job, go to a different job. I'm going to try a different career. I'll try a different hobby. I don't know. How about alcohol and drugs? I'll try some porn. I'll try eating my way to happiness and develop all kinds of, of food addictions. Problem is, listen to me, listen to me. There is a kind of emptiness in your life that you cannot fill on your own. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you do. As a matter of fact, man, sometimes we're trying to fill it on our own and we figured out this is a bottomless pit. I keep trying to fill it and it just feels emptier and emptier and I feel more and more drained. I feel more and more empty. I, I have to believe Jesus' friends were feeling that at the deepest level on Sunday morning. Again, at first they come, they find this empty tomb. They're not excited about this. They see the empty tomb. At first, they are more deflated than ever. More empty than they've ever been. But what an irony. What an irony. What a coincidence. Not so much. I want to say, that we're going to put this up on the screen because I really want you to get a hold of this. This tomb that was empty inside that morning turned out to be good news for anyone who's empty inside. You empty today? I got great news for you. Later, later on that day, they discovered that an empty tomb means a resurrected Jesus, and that is a total game changer in your life. And by the way, let me just kind of add this. If to your ear, Jesus rising from the dead, if that sounds, if that sounds great, but, but it sounds just more, nothing more than like a great fairy tale... A nice little story that we tell on Easter because it's inspiring, it'll stir you up, and it would be even better if it was actually true. If that's, if that's your feeling, can I tell you this? Do you understand this? That the resurrection of Christ is one of the most indisputable facts in all of history, and I'm not even asking you to take my word for it. Go check it out for yourself. You don't believe the preacher. Maybe you're, maybe you're not sure what to do with church. Maybe you've been to church before and you're a little bit skeptical about it. Don't even take my word for it. Go study it yourself. And you will see that not only in, in, throughout history has no one been able to disprove the resurrection of Christ. Quite the opposite. There is an enormous avalanche of evidence that this actually happened. That the tomb was empty. And it was empty on Sunday because Jesus was alive. Study it for yourself. And, and listen, if you feel empty here today, an empty tomb means you don't have to stay that way. You just don't. And now you have a choice. You, you, you got options. You could spend the rest of your life, if you want, trying to fill all of those gaping holes, those cavernous, empty places in your life by yourself, on your own, but at best, listen... Even if you try to fill them with good things. Do you understand that there are some holes that at a minimum are just harder to fill than others? Now let me give you a quick personal testimony. Let me take you back to 2021. I had a really, really um, weird season in my life. 
In fact, it was on the heels of a very difficult season. Let me, let me take you back to 2019, in fact. 2019, over the span of just a few months, we lost a lot of leaders here at Morningstar. We lost some elders. We lost some, some staff members. Nothing was wrong. Nothing weird was happening. They, they were moving. Uh, they were moving to other parts of the state. They were moving to other, uh, other states beyond Florida for, for opportunities that God was bringing their way. And that just happens from time to time. But I'm going to tell you, it left me and my already overloaded plate just not quite sure what to do. Stretched beyond what I thought I could possibly bear. And oh, that, that's, not the, that's not all. Let, let's fast forward out of the end of 2019 and into the beginning of 2020. Anybody remember what happened, what hit our world in, in 2020? COVID, right. Remember that great time? Wasn't that a lot of fun? COVID. Then COVID set us back on our heels and, and think back with me to everything else that was going on, the, the civil and relate, uh, racial strife that was going on in our world and the riots and the economy was going down the toilet bowl. And then we had that awfully fun election that now, hey, guess what? We get to do all over again in 2024. Yay. Well, this was a tough time. And, 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 and I hit this stage where I was just going and going and going and, sp- and pouring things out. And I, I kind of hit the skids. Mentally and emotionally, I felt so depleted in my life. And, and, and the things that I typically would do to kind of fill things back up, you know, I was, I was still working hard. I was still um, running and lifting weights and staying in shape and eating right and sleeping well and honoring Sabbath and pray. I was still doing all the things that typically would fill the holes, but now it ain't working because I'm running on empty and I can't get enough of any of that to, to fill these holes. So I sat down. I sat down with our elders one day. I kind of thought, man, I... I I don't feel like I'm in a great place. I feel like the, the warning signal is on my dash in my car. And I need, I need you guys to pray for me. I need you to give me some counsel. I, get, I need some wisdom. They said, here's your wisdom. You're going to be going away for a while in a, good, in a good way. I typically would take one week worth of vacation in the summertime. They said, no, 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 one week ain't going to do it. You're going to be going away for a lot longer than that. Let's, let's talk about several weeks at a time. I was like, there's no way we can do that. I can't do that. Why can't you do that? We just can't do that. Why can't you do it? Because, okay, I hate to say this out loud, but we all know the church can't possibly survive without me for that long. There's no way I can go away for three weeks, four weeks. I can't disappear for an entire month, and then the church is going to fall apart without me. They said, no, it would be fine. I said, how do you know? They said, listen, don't flatter yourself. We can do this. We're big boys and girls. We can handle the church. We can handle the ministry. So you stop playing Superman tough guy and go and get the rest that you need. You get out of here. I said, okay, I will. (laughs) And I did. I had never been away from Morningstar longer than that, ever in the, at that point, 20-something years that we had been going at a ch- as a church, never. But I have to tell you that even then, I was so thankful for the getaway, for the R&R, but I, I have to tell you, it was quite a while before I started feeling normal again. It was quite a while before I started noticing any kind of positive change at all. What does this prove for us? It shows us that at best, listen, even if I try to fill the empty holes in life on my own and I'm filling them with really, really good things like rest and recovery and, and even prayer and lots of, do you understand there are some holes in your life that are just going to be harder to fill? And like I said, there are places in your life you will not be able to feel, I don't care who you are. Doesn't matter what you try. Doesn't matter what you do. Even worse. And I know you know this. Sometimes we try to fill those empty places in our life with all of the worst things. Some of the most unhealthy things that not only leave us longing for more, not only just wondering why and why do I feel I'm trying all these different things and I feel emptier than ever. Sometimes, though, they even do damage along the way. I mentioned empty gas tanks. How many of you, raise your hands, how many of you have ever run out of gas? Anybody else? 
besides me? Come on, this is church. Be honest. I know it's more than two. Okay, good. Good. You're like, I don't know. You can join our club. I have. It ain't fun. We'll get t-shirts and tattoos, all right? <clears throat> Listen. I know this about you. I know, I, I, can, I can feel fairly confident to say that when you ran out of gas and you're standing on the side of the road, that you did not come up with this brilliant idea like, hey, I know, I'll shovel some dirt in the gas tank and see how that works. How do I know that? Because I, I know you're not a moron. Right? Whenever you run out of gas, you're not thinking, I'll pour some kitchen grease down the hole, or I'll put some mud in there, or I'll put, I don't know, some, I'll put some maple syrup. They were good on my pancakes this morning. Surely it'll be good for my itch. No, because you're not an idiot. So I know. You're smarter than that. Well, Listen. I, you, you fill up your empty tank with the best gas you can afford because you know that your engine runs best that way. Let me tell you something. You can pour all kinds of different things into the engine of your soul, and we do, but you have to let Jesus fill the empty holes, the empty places in your life because, listen to me, your life runs best on His grace. Your, your life functions best with God's mercy flowing into your mind and into your heart and in your spirit. Your life will work best, and it'll never be better than when Jesus is pouring into you on a daily basis the joy and the peace and the hope that can only be found in Him. So good news today. Good news. The one who left the tomb empty early on Resurrection Sunday says you don't have to leave here empty today. You just don't. You, you, you can. But Jesus stepped out of, of the grave that morning and now He wants to step into your life and He wants to fill every hole. He can but he's not going to kick the door down today. He's not going to force his way in. He's not going to muscle his way in. He's, that's not what he's about. You have to say yes to him. You have to look to Jesus and say, hey, I, I've tried everything else. I've tried filling my tank, my empty places in life, these voids, the places where I am depleted. I've tried to fill it all on my own with good stuff and with bad, with healthy and unhealthy. None of it works. I need you. You say that to Jesus and he'll come. You invite him into your life today. And he'll come and I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. It's a little unusual what I'm going to ask you to do, in fact. And, and, and this prayer, honestly, today is going to, is going to be, it's, it's in some ways for anybody who feels emptiness. Maybe, maybe you feel emptiness because you had these big hopes and dreams and aspirations for your life, and all of a sudden, man, it was just falling apart at the seams, and it never happened like you thought it was going to happen. And you feel empty. Maybe you're in a marriage or another kind of relationship that you thought was going to be a whole lot better than this, and it ain't. And you feel empty. Maybe there's some other way. I don't know. We're going to pray for you in a little bit, but I want to, I want to pray for some people, and I know you're here. I know you're here because we prayed for you to come. We've been praying for months for this moment. And if you would say, Tony, I, I feel empty, and I, I know it's because I don't have this relationship with Jesus that you're talking about. I'm not serving God. I know I'm not serving God, but I want to. Today, I'm, I'm going to just stop trying to fill up all of these voids, these empty places on my own. I'm done doing that, and I'm going to try Jesus. I'm, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to stand up on your feet. Matter of fact, at count of three, if that's you, you say, I, I know it. I'm, I'm not going to play games. I'm not going to waste time. I'm not going to wait till next Sunday or next Christmas or next year. Today's the day I need Jesus in my life. On the count of three, I just want you to stand to your feet. Ready? One, two, three. 
Stand up. Come on. Come on. I know you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, I got to have God. I got to have God. There's no other way to do this. I'm tired of doing it on my own. Just stand up real quick, real quick, real quick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I know there are more. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my soul. Just stand up real quick. Thank you. Thank you to those of you who are standing because you're doing it. You're doing a very bold thing right now, and I admire it. I do. Anybody else? Real quick, just stand up. All right, second thing I'm going to ask you to do is, this is, going to, this is going to sound a little strange, a little odd, but I want you to turn around just for a second and look at the empty chair that's behind you. Because in, in a second, I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat and come down here so that we can pray for you. But right now, I want you to get a glimpse of that empty chair because I want that to, I want that to represent the empty places in your life that this morning, right now, you are leaving behind for good. Like, I'm never going back there. I'm not going to do that anymore. That's the emptiness back there. I'm moving forward with Jesus. And now what I want you to do is just get out of your seat and come down the aisle. I want our prayer team to come, if you will, as well. Just real quick, our prayer team, just come up here and be ready to pray. And listen, if you want somebody to pray with you, say, hey, I don't want to go up there by myself. I'm feeling kind of alone. I'm feeling kind of awkward. Would you go pray with me? That's totally fine. Totally cool. Not a problem. If you want to pray with one of these prayer team members, that's fine. That's totally fine. If you want to pray by yourself, that's fine. That's fine too. But would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Real quick. Listen, here's a challenge. You may be here and you may be thinking, you know what, I am following Jesus. i got a great relationship with God, but I'm not quite sure about this person on my right or the person on my left. I love him. I love her. You might even just say, hey, if you want to go pray, I'll go pray with you. That's totally fine, too. Just ask them. You never know. Just say, hey, if you want to go down there, I'll go with you. You don't have to stand by yourself today. I would not let you stand alone. So very quickly, anybody else? Anybody else you want to come? Very quickly, very quickly. Okay, you guys hang on here with me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm so proud of this decision that you have made. And the courage. You're, you're amongst friends here. You're amongst friends here. I, I want to ask before we pray, though, if there's anybody else here, and, and maybe you're a follower of Christ, you have a relationship with Jesus, but you feel empty today, too. You got emptiness in another area, and you need prayer. Just stand up on your feet real quickly. And I know there are a bunch of us. There was a bunch of us in the first service. But real quick, you got empty places in your life and you need God to fill them. Come on. Would you stand? Would you stand? Would you stand? We want to pray for you today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got empty places? You got empty voids in your life and you know only God? Because we're going to pray for you too. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. It's all right. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I'm going to invite the people around you to just lay a hand on your shoulder, maybe take you by the hand. If you want to share how they can pray for you, feel free to do that. If you don't want to do that, that's okay too. But I want you guys to pray for each other. I want you to pray for these folks up here. And hey, if you just came forward to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, just talk to Him. Just close your eyes right now and talk to Him. Like you'd talk to me. But like you talk to a friend, because that's what he wants to be. He wants to be your greatest friend, and he will be. Like I said, he won't kick the door down, but he'll, he'll come on in if you'll invite him. Just say, Jesus, I need you. Just say, Jesus, come into my life right now. I'm tired of trying to fill the holes. I'm tired of trying it on my own. Would you forgive me for my sin, my screw-ups, my mess-ups, the ways I've fumbled the ball? Listen, if you're praying that prayer right now, you don't even have to feel shy and weird about that. That's true of all of us, whether we want to admit it or not. Sometimes we just get to a place where we admit it out loud to God. And he says, I already knew. But thank you for coming clean because now, now we can deal with it. Just ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to clean you up. Ask Him to come into your life as Lord and Savior and leader and friend and, and, and master and everything that you need Him to be. And watch Him, watch Him, watch Him fill up those, those cavernous, empty places in your life. Those of you who are back in the seats and praying, I don't know if you're praying because you got an empty marriage, an empty relationship with somebody. Maybe you, you've got emptiness 
uh, when it comes to your finances. You've been really struggling. There's just a giant hole in your financial world. I don't know what it is. I just know. Listen, you can come talk to me if you want to, and I'll gladly talk to you, but I'm going to just turn you, your attention to him. You can talk to friends. You can talk to people in your life group, and all that's good. All that is helpful, but they're going to turn you to him. So let him. You don't have any joy in your life. You don't have any peace in your life. You don't have any stability in your life. Everything just feels so, so unstable and so insecure. Find your security. Find your identity in Him today. Find your answer in Him today. Find the miracle that you need. Find the touch from the Master's hand in Him today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Is there anybody else who wants to come? It's not too late, and we will wait all day. We'll wait patiently because you're worth it. You're worth it to us, and you're worth it to him. You want to come? Again, you might grab the neighbor's hand and say, hey, I don't want to go by myself. Will you go with me? They'll go. If, you, if they won't go, wave at me. I'll come grab your hand and I'll walk down the aisle with you. I'll walk arm in arm with you if you want. You want to come pray? Come pray. Come on. Come on. be patient because you are worth it to him and we have been praying for you we have been praying for this moment i'm telling you for months and months and months even longer god's been preparing for this moment god's been planning for this moment god knew you'd be here let him fill you today let him heal you today let him save you today let him fill all of the emptiness in your life right now back in your seats. If you're online, he's with you. Wherever you are listening to this right now, God, Jesus loves you. I don't know much today, but I know that Jesus loves you. Maybe you're watching it right now in real time. Maybe you're watching this later today. Maybe you're watching it next week, next month, next year. I don't know when you're going to be watching it. The same will still be true whenever you see this. Jesus loves you. He loves you. And he left an empty grave on Sunday morning. About 2,000 years ago, so you wouldn't have to leave here empty today. He loves you. He loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just begin to worship God all over this place, wherever you are? If you're in your living room, you're driving down the road, worship God with us. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, lift your voices. Lift up a shout of praise in this place for a God who's worthy. We're here to praise you, Jesus, because you are alive and well. and You are on the throne today. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Hey, could we worship a little bit more? Y'all be all right with that? Can we worship? How many of you are thankful for a God who loves you? How many of you are thankful for a God who's alive today? Anybody else besides me? I want to let them ask the band to get ready. I want all of you to, you're going to want to stand up on your feet for this one anyway. So might as well go ahead and beat it to the punch. Go ahead and stand up all over this room. And let's worship God today on this Resurrection Sunday. God bless all of you for being here. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Just 
again When the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran our road I met a man I didn't know And he told me Get up, 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 get up,
What a day, huh? Good to be in the house of the Lord together. We are so glad you visited with us. If you're here for the first time, please let us know who you are. We have a special gift for you on the way out at Connection Central. We also want to let you know about a few things that are happening here. Next week, we are having a water baptism. So today, if you gave your life to Jesus, the Bible says the next step is to get baptized in water. You can go right online and you can register for that. We hope you do. And then you saw on your seats as you came in, in one month from today, we're having a party in the park. So you're all welcome to come out to that. We're just going to have a fellowship time after church together. And then today, we've got a lot of food out there. We don't want to have any of it left over. So please help yourself to the food we have. We have a photo booth outside. Take a fam family photo or with some friends. And then on your way out, Pastor Tony has a special gift he wanted everyone to have. And it's inside one of those eggs. And we're not going to tell you what yours is, but I sure hope none of them are empty. So we are so glad you're here. Can we say this together as we close our service with this benediction? Ready? Go. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Happy Easter, everyone. God bless you. Savior, I thank God.